Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this Friday, March 3rd in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Emmy Award winning actress Sharon Case joins me today from the set to talk about her almost three decades working on the number one daytime drama, The Young and the Restless. She joined the cast of YNR back in August of 1994 as Sharon Collins, a character who endured many ups and downs in her marriages to Nicholas Newman, Jack Abbott, and Victor Newman, to name a few of her. Uh, Young and the Restless Men. Sharon received Daytime Emmy nominations in 1996 and 97 as Outstanding Younger Actress in a Drama Series, and in 1999, she won for Outstanding Supporting Actress. She was also nominated again for the same category in 2000 and 2004. Before moving to Genoa City, Sharon portrayed Debbie Simon on As the World Turns, Dawn Winthrop on General Hospital, and Ann Wells on Valia of the Dolls. Her other TV credits include roles on Cheers, Beverly Hills 90210, Silk Stockings, Parker Lewis Can't Lose, and Doogie Howser, MD, to name a small flu. Phew. <laughs> I am thrilled to welcome Emmy Award winner Sharon Case to the locker room. Hey, Sharon. Yay. Thanks for Thank having me. Thank you so me. much for being here. It's such I a pleasure. You. And it's I know you're doing this on lunch, so yeah. thank you even more. My gosh, we've been working so much. Well, I have been, the whole cast has been, because we've been shooting a special storyline and episode for our big anniversary. And so um, I have been here every Speaking day, of, three weeks, every day for three weeks. Speaking um, of, look at that. Look at our beautiful cast photo. Stunning. Bravo, Matt Cain. Bravo. Hey, Matt Cain. <laughs> Matt Cain. That, that's incredible. Take me back, Sharon. You studied dance as a young girl, but is it true you always wanted to be an actress? Um, no. I uh, I thought I was going to be a dancer. You um, did, okay. Yeah, well, when because I, I was young when I was dancing, and so I thought that I would just do that forever. And then my dad, I remember one night at dinner, said, you know, Sharon, you can't be a dancer forever. Uh, they have tend to have injuries and short careers. Thank God I never ended up having an injury and I can still be athletic and work out today. But um, he pushed me into acting and I didn't even like it at first. Oh, wow. That's wild. I know. I got to like it. But once I got once I went to acting school and then I felt like I knew what I was doing, then I liked it. And, and was he in the business or anything? He just sort of led no. you down that. Wow. He just led me I down the path, I think, because I because I was already a dancer, that was I was going into the arts in some way, shape, or form. That's so interesting. Um, and dance was it just something you were introduced to as a? Yeah, um, it was what I you know it was just what I did as a kid. You know, kids you're either into soccer, or karate, or dance usually. <laughs> that's so. That's great. So take me back to that first audition uh, for General Hospital to play Monica's long lost daughter. Yeah, that was frightening. Um, I, <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I had not gone to acting school yet. Um, I wasn't an actor. I was still really a dancer. Um, and I, my agency called me and said I had an audition for General Hospital. That was a uh, kind of bizarre, but I went and um, then I booked the job. <laughs> I don't know how I booked the job, but you know what? Um, the producer, the executive producer um, told me, he asked me, um, do you know why you booked this job? And I said, no idea. <laughs> and he said, it's actually because you're a ballerina and because I know that you have the discipline that it will take to do this job. This is a hard job. Wow, I love that. Who was the executive producer at that time? It was famous Wes Kenny. The love Wes that. Kenny. Yep. Yeah. He That's also it. produced The Young and the Restless. Yeah, yeah. I, I, right, because I think Tracy Bregman told me a story that he recommended her for Y&R or something like that. I can't remember off the top of oh, my head. Oh, neat. Oh, really? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He was fantastic. Uh, it was great working with him. I'm really lucky that I I get to say I worked with Wes Kenny. And Leslie Charlson. What was that like? Did you had you known? 
I'm sure you knew what soaps were, but had you grown up watching any? Yeah, I, I had grown up watching. Um, my mother watched General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, and Patch and Kayla were my favorite. And um, <laughs> I also, what else did we, we watched Another World a little bit too. Those were my mom's shows. So when I came, went on to General Hospital, I knew who everybody was. Um, Leslie Charlson was so kind and great to me, and along with Jane Elliott. Jane Elliott was the best. And I then later went on to work with Jane on Valley of the Dolls. She, I think she co-produced it or something, it turned out. It's funny, a lot oh. of the people who I work with on Valley ended up working in soap operas either, well, either before or after. Since working at y &R, I can't tell you how many people I've run into and met here either directors producers or actors who uh worked on belly that's so wild uh jane was on guiding light and i watched got it when she was on she played an incredible character incredible. oh really yeah She's so and you worked with yes and you worked with my guiding light friend kurt mckinney yeah i did yes <laughs> kurt, kurt's done a lot of stuff now i did i get to work i got to work with him he's wonderful and, you know, yeah, he was yeah. so nice to me because I was young and brand new and I didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, he was just really nice to me about, about all that. Very tolerant of me. <laughs> you know, that that's interesting because to think about it, you, you know, you are on YNR now almost 30 years and you welcome many people into Genoa City. Um, talk about how important having Leslie and Kurt and Jane treat you as they did because i you know it just it, it it leaves a you know positive you know taste in your mouth of of yeah, the experience it really does you know um being warmly welcomed by by people like jane and leslie um you know when i was new and i was young and i was quite the underdog it was it was really nice to walk into a hectic environment like that and 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 be greeted by people like that so yeah that did affect me and i i do tend to try to warmly welcome people here and make them feel comfortable and properly introduce them and um I, you know i guess maybe my experience in general hospital that subconsciously that's now in my head and that's that's who i am I, I believe that because you, 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 the first thing you said was you were so nervous for that audition. And I'm sure you said you were, you were barely an actress when you started. So to have that, it's got to give you some comfort, you know, as you start out. Yeah, it does. It helps to have um, some kind of lifeline when, if you do book the job and you're showing up on this hectic stage with at least a hundred people who you don't know and you're trying to remember their names the actors you have their character name their real name it's so confusing and so it's <laughs> nice to have somebody that feels like a rock to you to some extent a absolutely 100 percent. well as i sit backstage i grew up watching world turns and worked there and loved you know all of the people you worked with take me back First of all, what was it like? Because you moved to New York at a young age, too. What was it like living in the Big Apple? It was so different and, and tough. Again, I was quite young. I, I had only been to New York once before for like a couple of days. So I had been there. But, um, you know, it's weird. But I always knew that at some point I was going to end up moving to New York and just living and working for a stint in New York. I just knew it like this weird premonition all my life, or at least all my working life, and as a dancer and so forth. And so when I booked World Turns and I suddenly had to move to New York in four days, I was like, yeah, <laughs> coming, here it is, off I go. It wasn't a big surprise or, you know, a, a giant thing or endeavor or something to overcome. I just sort of like, I, I knew I was going to do that. And here it is. And it's so weird. So... I pack up all my stuff. I move across the country to New York City by myself, uh, get a taxi from JFK. And um, <laughs> this young girl, I have, um, I have a reservation at a hotel apartment. So I'm going to stay there because I have to start work right away. I figure I'll just go there to start with. And my taxi driver, who was so nice, 
he said, you have a lot of baggage. Are you moving to New York City? And I said, yes, I'm moving here right now from Los Angeles. It's like, okay, um, do you know where you're going to live? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so when we drove over the Queensboro Bridge, he pointed down and said, look down there. Do you see that island? That's Roosevelt Island. That's a very, very safe place to be, and you should live there. And I didn't live, move there immediately, but ultimately, I moved to Roosevelt Island, and I loved it. There. Oh, wow. I yeah. love that. What a, that is a great story. I love that. <laughs> I, that is fabulous. What do you remember about your audition? Did you have to screen test as well for World Turns? Yeah, yeah, I did. I had to, you know what's weird? I can't really remember the screen test that well. I don't know why. <laughs> I remember the screen test for The Young and the Restless and, and also General Hospital. But yeah, I, I don't remember how that worked. You know, I must have flown to New York for the screen test. Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm kind of remembering now. I, um, I, I, flew there I know it's a long time ago, so don't. don't and, oh, yeah. And that's right. I do remember now. They put us in a hotel at the W Hotel in Times Square. And, time, you know, if you ever, if you live in New York, you know, you don't want to be in Times Square. Not really. Everybody thinks that that's where people want to be. It's very hectic there. So I was just getting to New York and looking at Times Square going, oh, my gosh, how am I going to do this? This is hectic. Um, but yeah, they, I was in and out. It was in a hotel room auditioning and back to JFK. When I landed, I was told I had the job and I was to be back in four days. So, um, I can't, yeah, but I can't I, imagine. I've, I've heard this story many times from actors in these interviews of, you know, it happens. you have to be there in four days. I, I mean, talk about stress. I know it's really crazy. So, uh, I, I you know, I moved to New York City. I liked working on As World Turns. You know, when I moved to New York, I did not know anybody in New York City. I was literally there by myself. So I was really focused on making friends at work since I didn't have any friends outside of work. And uh, I worked with Yvonne Perry and Judson Mills. And I, I've met a lot of friends there behind the scenes as well. Look at me with glasses on. Look at the three of you. Judson and Yvonne. Oh, that's a nice photo. Stephen Bergman sent that to me today. Oh, Stephen, I remember Stephen. Hi, Stephen Bergman. And I want to <laughs> say to all the viewers, too, because I was, um, even though I know I'm rarely on Twitter these days, but I have, uh, I went on Twitter to check this promo, and I saw so many people commenting that they were looking forward to watching the interview, and that just really made me feel really good that many of you wanted to see this, and you had some questions that you wanted Ellen to ask me, but I wanted to say to you, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks they, for tuning they, in. They definitely questions. were very, very excited. Thank um, you for talk for about I Judson and Yvonne. What? Say it again. I didn't hear I didn't what was the last part. I know you're there. Um, love you. They, they are. And I, there was one I want to read, and it might be from Portugal, but I'm not sure. She says, oh. or he says, you did an amazing job with the breast cancer story. I'm a counselor and I am also a cancer survivor. You helped a lot of women with that story. Thank you so much. Oh, oh wow, that really means a lot to me. You know, when we, whenever we do, or when I do a story that takes up something that serious, that and uh, Cassie's death and, and a few other things, that when I get responses from the fans like that, that's really, that really means everything to me. Um, I, uh, to know that I, I'm not just here acting and doing a day job, but I mean, you know, people's lives are affected and, and it connects Abs us. Absolutely. And I, I, I wanted to mention that bef before we get back to YNR, uh, because it was scrolling up and I wanted to remember to read that to you. Talk about Judston, Judston and Yvonne working with them um, and what you, and you also were part of one of, you know, I think every fan of As the World Turns' his favorite set, the Snyder Farm. Yep. <laughs> I was part of the Snyder Farm. That's true. I love this. Everyone loved the Snyder Farm. It was so, um, you know, it's so farmy. And we, I remember there were always fresh apples. You know, some sets had, <laughs> even the restless, we always have fresh flowers. But I remember Snyder had fresh apples all the time and it smelled like apples. And it was really cute. 
Um, I loved that set. I loved everybody I worked with. Jensen was hilarious. I'm glad that I got to work with him and, and got to know him because he was a little tough being young and living in New York City and by myself. And, you know, it was a little bit frightening. So Judson was great comic relief. And he gave <laughs> he he showed me the ropes and gave me a lot of pointers about New York City so that I started feeling comfortable. He told me what to do, and what not to do. So that was great. And Yvonne, she just I mean, I think Yvonne, she might have lived in New York City a long time uh, and had been from New York. So to her, she was just unpaced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people who grew up there, it is it is a very unfazed thing. I I agree. And, and I, I should have also mentioned Kathleen Widows. Oh, I loved her. Kathleen <laughs> Widows. What a sweetheart. She was the heart and soul of that show. Totally. Yeah, people people love that Emma Snyder. Yeah, they sure did. That was a real uh, uh, sweet story, the Snyder story. It was a beautiful, warm family story. I uh, totally agree. Totally agree. You know, so so you're you have Port Charles, you have Oakdale. What do you think you learned in those two experiences that you took on? For the rest, to you know, for the thirty years you're you're now at YNR. Um, well, a lot of things. I'm. Um, I learned what to expect of being on a soap opera, and you know how much dialogue you have, what's uh, going to be important, um, being on time, how to be a professional in a hectic job like this, and and deal with a lot of people. But um, I also learned from the first two that. Soap operas are a revolving door, mostly. And so you could be on one and then another and a third. And so when I when I came on to Young and the Restless, that was what I had learned and what I thought was true, that I wouldn't be here that long. And actually, when I started playing Sharon, I was on hold for Valley of the Dolls second season. And so I and Young and the Restless knew that I was only going to be here for a few months until we heard whether Valley got picked up or not. And I just thought Valley would get picked up and it didn't. Um, but now here I am and I'm really glad. Um, but I, I, did I mean, when you, they're a revolving door into the, you know, a lot of actors I've seen working here as I've worked here almost 30 years and I've seen actors come and go. And that's what I tell them, you know, look, this is mostly a revolving door. I lucked out uh, booking this role of Sharon. When when you say that out loud, thirty years, does it just like you know? How do you you know? Could you have ever fathomed you would have remained in one acting gig for thirty? I honestly don't. I have never fathomed that anybody anywhere <laughs> would ever be in a job that long of any kind. So uh, if that were going to happen to someone, I wouldn't think it would be me here on a soap opera um you know uh it's just these days people don't have jobs generally that long no matter what you do for a living they say that like most people end up having two different careers different yeah. types of careers in their lifetime so um it's really unusual in fact um so i never thought that this would happen um but i mean on the other hand, like it doesn't seem remarkable when I say it out loud because it doesn't feel like it's been almost 30 years. It feels like I've been here like, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. It doesn't feel like that. Time flew by. Yeah, it, it is. You blink and it, it, it's it, it's amazing. It really is. But you almost said no, right? You said no the first time for YNR? To the audition, yeah, um, because I was on Valley, so it it didn't make sense. And also, I was on hiatus from Valley of the Dolls, and my the schedule I that we had shooting Valley was so hard. I worked more hours every day than I I have ever heard of. I was so tired. My life was a disaster when we came onto hiatus because I had done nothing but be at the studio full time for months and months. 
so I was thankfully now on hiatus. I was on vacation and my agent called and said, you have an audition for Young and the Restless. And I'm, you have to be kidding me. I'm not, I'm on vacation. I'm actually going to stick with that. I know usually an actor will. I'm taking the time. Normally I would do anything as well, but I honestly, like for my mental health and my physical health, I needed to stay on vacation. So I, no, I'm like, the, I'm going to have to pass. But it um, it worked out that, um, I don't know, like a week later, they called again and said, if you're still interested in auditioning or if you want to audition now, you can. Well, that only involved me coming home, I think, from vacation like a day early or something. And I did. I, I came home a bit early. And then I went. I thought it was really, really kind. I was flattered that they would reach out a second time to me. And I so I made sure I got on the plane and came home and I auditioned. And and did you have to screen test with anybody? With Joshua Morrow. <laughs> my favorite so person. difficult, I'm sure. Oh my God. Yeah, so difficult. He is the easiest person to work with. He's so easygoing. Um, and wow, I, I just, yeah, my audition, it couldn't have gone wrong. I was working with Joshua and um, we were both so young and silly. Uh, I remember that. I think the audition, it was in Fenmore's store. So I remember us walking through what looked like, we don't have the set now, but it was just racks of clothing and circular racks, like at a normal department store. And we ran into each other there and we knew each other from school. Had, a, had some kind of conversation. I don't remember the dialogue exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. And then here you are. Here we both here are. are. Yeah. Joshua and me, all these years later. <laughs> <laughs> what was your relationship like with Bill Bell? Oh, gosh, Bill was so nice. Um, you know, he was really friendly, and you always felt like you could come up there and talk to him, you know, whenever you wanted, and you didn't feel afraid or that you were bothering him or anything. You know, I, I don't know if that was really the case on other shows that I was on, but you know, in general, one doesn't want to just go knocking on their executive producer or head writer's door and you know, bother them. You feel like you might be bothering them, but maybe you never really are. You just think you are, but Bill made sure that you felt welcome all the time. And that was really a nice feeling. It made the actors more relaxed at work and, anything you can do to try to feel relaxed as an actor is a, a big help. I, I he love really that. Kind. He was really kind. Robin is asking, what do you think the secret is to YNR still going strong for 50 years when so many soaps are nothing but a memory? Um, well, I mean, I do think that you know, this story was written by Bill Bell initially and for many years. And so even though we've had a lot of different writing teams take over here and there throughout the years since Bill has been gone, still, fundamentally, this is still the Young and the Restless Bill Bell show. And it still has a lot of its structure still in place. And um, I think that, that that structure, those characters and those stories um, that that whole foundation that is still there, and that's what people like about Young and the Restless. They love the show that Bill Bell created, and you know, in daytime TV, Bill is really like the air and spelling of daytime TV. His shows are well written and popular, and and the characters are well liked, and he just he knew what he was doing. He he did. I mean, and and they're about family and the. You know, the Abbots and the Newmans have been there since, you know, almost day one, probably day one. I don't know that for sure, but pretty close. Yeah, I, yeah, I I'm not, I don't want to say who was I, I don't want to say it wrong. I should know this by yeah, now. Yeah, me neither. I, I, I'm not a hundred percent. Were you there when they opened the time capsule? Yeah, I well, I was there as freezing. I think it was the coldest day ever in Los Angeles. I was outside. <laughs> So I stayed as long as I could. I was freezing, but I was there. I was so excited to open that. That's so I, awesome. I, 
remember what we put in it yet. I was there when we we created it, um, and I couldn't remember what was inside of it. So yeah, um, after uh, Melody gave her speech and the other cast members were invited to go and check it out, you probably see on Instagram, some people's Instagram, um, some video of me just digging through that thing as fast as I can. That's because I was, I was excited to see what was in there. And um, so it was Cameron. Cameron was right next to me and she's like, give me this. I want to dig in here. And then we were also trying to hurry because by then we were frozen from being outside. I love that. Frozen in Los Angeles. That doesn't happen that often. No, it's, really, <laughs> it's so weird, this weather. And, and you were there for the 25th, and now here you are for the 50th. Yeah, that's so weird. That that does ring true to me, like rings home to me, because I really, truly remember the 25th and how fabulous it was. It was so fancy. We were at the Crystal Ballroom at the Beverly Hills Hotel. All the girls wore gowns at this, you know, uh, anniversary party. And I remember we had, uh, they set up gambling tables, like fun gambling, you know, Monopoly money gambling, but it was really fun. It was such a swanky event and I'd never been into anything like that before. I couldn't imagine ever being to something like that again, much less like, oh, hey, I guess in 25 more years, we're going to do this again. I'll be there for that. Nobody thought that. Nobody thought that. I, lo I love that. You know, a fan, Oak Dalian, a, an As the World Turns fan, had asked, is it uh, easier or harder playing a character named Sharon? You know, it was harder at first because I played a lot of different roles by different names never my own. And it kind of threw me off at first, really. I, it was weird, but now it's definitely easier. Now that I really feel like Sharon Newman and I have sort of meshed together. Now I can't imagine playing a character by any other name than my own. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it's going to be. <laughs> if I book another role somewhere else, I'm that, that's going to be in your contract from now on My for whatever. <laughs> I, I love that. That's fantastic. Why not? Why yeah, not? But, but at first, um, I, I was kind of weirded out by it because I remember I was here at the studio doing a screen test with Joshua Rowe, and I was in the hair and makeup room, and then the character in the script had been written as the character named Connie. So that was how I memorized it. And that was how my first audition went. And here I was at the screen test, getting my makeup done. And someone from production called the makeup room and then told me and the other girls, we are now going to change the name of the character you're trying out for to Sharon. So your scene partner is going to call you Sharon, not Connie. And the name of it is Sharon. And there were a few girls auditioning, including me. And I thought, what? Why, why are they doing that? That's my name. What? <laughs> I couldn't figure out what was behind this. Were they like trying to sabotage me or something? And <laughs> I didn't know that there was already a character named Sharon and they were casting that role. They were recasting. I didn't know that. That's so funny. Yeah, Connie doesn't work. <laughs> Connie, she, her name is not, yeah, it didn't work. I mean, I was fine with it. Uh, but then it was Sharon, and yeah, that was uh, why it was just kind of weird for me at first to be called Sharon, but maybe it was just meant to be. Meant to be. Is there a lot of great energy around the studio with the 50th and, you know, shooting this beautiful photo? Yeah, there sure is. I mean, we've got so many actors returning, uh, Michael Damien, Trisha Cass, we've got, thank God, Laura Lee is back. And, um, and, you know, to name a few, there are so many actors that are returning for one or many, in some cases, many episodes. So it's really a buzz when you see old friends again. Of course, everybody's so excited and um, have, we're having a great time. This is a great reunion for us. I love it. And I lo love that, you know, you, you have the ability to do that, that people are around you know, the actors yeah. love their yeah. experience and want to come back, you know. Yeah, thank God they wanted to come back because we wanted them back. <laughs> and 
I'm just talking about the ones that have been here recently that I've been working with over a period of weeks. You've known about it. You've you know, you've uh, seen about, uh, you've seen in the press that Michael Damien and some others are back, but I can't tell you who, but other actors are coming back later in the year, probably throughout the year, but I do know of some that are coming later that other than the ones you already have heard of, there are some surprises coming this year and I'm really excited. That's awesome. I love that. That that's really cool. One of your truly most powerful storylines was when you lost your daughter Cassie Cameron Grimes. I mean, that death reverberated for such a long time. Yeah. I, I I am sure it was one of the hardest. What what do you remember about that time and that story? Um, I remember I was stand where where I was standing when I heard the news that she was being killed off. I was in the hair and makeup room. Uh, she was there. She was devastated. I was devastated. Uh, we all were. It was hard. Uh, we probably knew about it for uh, three or four weeks before we shot those final scenes. Um, but yeah, it has affected everyone, every storyline from, you know, on The Young and the Restless all these years. In fact, today, I talk about Cassie in what I'm shooting. Oh, we wow. still talk about it. Well, yeah, I mean, but fans would actually think it was nuts if you were not playing her mom, you know, but not yeah. every show always remembers to do that and to talk about right. characters that have, you know, moved on or pet died or whatever the scenario. Yeah. Well, I think that keeping the history of these characters alive because you you talk about it not every day but you talk about it enough that you're constantly bringing these characters history onto the screen most of the time that you see the character even if it's 10 years 20 years later we're still talking about who this person is um and that's part of why this show i think is very successful this writing and characters are successful because we we do that we don't just utterly forget about main characters and events these are these identify your child yeah this a mother is... would a mother wouldn't forget about her child i mean that's no. just not no. and losing yeah. her the way you did yeah that was pretty tragic Oof. really hard time i get very upset whenever i watch those scenes talk about them i just get <laughs> i it's just so upsetting it was so there was just something so real about it yeah it's raw yeah absolutely so talk raw. about you know watching cameron grow up in front of your eyes you know you you got to play with her as cassie and now yeah. as mariah well that turned out to be a good thing in the end it's a sad story with a great happy spin because <laughs> now she's mariah and we love mariah <laughs> mariah's fun Absolutely. Well, as we mentioned early on, you've worked with some incredible men. So I'm going to name some names and tell me what uh, comes to mind when I say their names. Joshua okay. Morrow. Um, handsome. Ha, Peter Bergman. Oh, uh, let's see. Professional, I'd say. Like he is a great actor, Shakespearean. Ooh, Eric Braden. Um, I think of Robert De Niro. Ooh. He just reminds me of him somehow. I love that. Steve Burton. Oh, let's see. Steve Burton. I don't know. I haven't seen him in so long. What do I think of him? You can see. Well, he's athletic. And my dear Jordi Villasuso, who I adore. Oh, kind kindness he's humble and kind that's the best way to be oh that is amen to that he really really he really is mm -hmm. another loss for you i mean you i mean how many times have you lost people on this show do you know <laughs> um quite a few Your daughter yeah <laughs> ray ray and dylan 
um i don't i think that's it maybe but, you know i i think nikki, they like to make sharon cry yeah they do nikki's lost a lot of <laughs> he's had more husbands than me come on <laughs> but but talk about the pairing of nick and sharon and having you know an acting partner like joshua for all these years i mean is it is it you know i don't know if riding a bicycle is the right word but you know like it's just easy it is. yeah it is like that it's easy it became easy we are each other's easiest scene partner don't have to think about it worry about it we know it's all just going to come naturally we don't ever we never rehearse it or run lines joshua and i are always ready if the crew's ready to just shoot it without rehearsing it just go straight to tape um because yeah we it is like riding a bike and that's not a bad thing that's a super lucky thing we're both lucky to have that in each other absolutely i think that it's got to feel that way yeah. it, it, it it's almost like that blanket you know Having someone yeah, it is. that you that, trust yeah. as much as you you trust each other. We really do. We not. It's not just trust. We know each other so well. Like Joshua, if there's anything off about me at all, or whatever it is, I'm thinking he can read what I'm thinking instantly. He knows right where I'm going. He knows if, if I'm going to be sad in the scene or if I'm actually sad in real life. Like what? <laughs> he knows everything. He just knows my face, my expression so well. And it's, you know, he once described me, I think, as, you know, an old sweatshirt or that old favorite sweater you put on. And I think a lot of people uh, took that the wrong way. <laughs> what, what he was giving me a compliment, meaning yeah. that it's like your old favorite blanket. You know, it's reliable and familiar and, and warming and comforting. Well, when you're doing the type of work that you're doing, that it has got to be so, so important. It is important. It really is. It, it's, I mean, it's fun to work with other people too. I work with a lot of other actors. He, so does he. And it's a breath of fresh air to sometimes just change it up and work with somebody new, of course. But that doesn't mean that you would permanently replace your favorite <laughs> better. You want to be able to grab that sweater again one day absolutely um is there who are some of the folks you would like to work with more that you haven't over the years um i would like to work with eric more i always think say i do my best work with him and i i would love to see um you know victor and sharon sort of repair that father-daughter relationship that they used to have a long time ago i think that would be cute um and let's see, I love working with Melanie Thomas Scott. Our Lucy and Ethel days were the best. I miss that um, when we were dragging Cameron Kirsten's body around in a sewer was so much fun. We both miss that. But um, and then there's Michelle Stafford. You know, we had this epic triangle years and years ago with Nick. And, um, you know, it went on for a long time and it played out and it was fantastic. But, you know, and since then, I haven't really gotten to work with her. So um, I'm hoping one day, you know, there'll be something for her and I in the storyline. I love that. There's some talented people on your show. Yeah, only the best. Only the best. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what, what does Sharon do, you know, when you're on set and you're last in the day or you just have a lot of downtime? What, what, what do you do at the studio? Are you a knitter? Are you a reader? Um, let's see. I am a reader. Um, I will, I don't know. I think I just jump around, um, and, and surf and, and read various things. I do a lot of reading. I don't watch TV. Um, I might watch some YouTube Do you watch videos. TV at home? No. You're not a TV person. I'm a reader. So I read on my phone. So I have my phone with me oftentimes but um yeah i mean i now and then we'll go through a bender where i'm watching some tv yeah but it doesn't last that long and, and you know in general i'm not a re i'm i'm not a tv watcher i mean when there's something when there's a series that really grabs me i will stick with that um like oh i know that the new a uh, series uh season four of uh you 
is out. Oh, I we watched the first half already. The second half is coming next week. It's okay. Really I it. good. Is it the good? Because half, um, I love that show. I've watched all of the other three seasons, and so I will be tuning in. He is in. so good. He is so, so good. He's so good. He is yeah. really, really good. Um, uh, and I just, and, I love that. I love yeah. that show. And you know, um, in the last season, his wife, remember, she was a baker. And yeah, love, love, love. Yeah, and they had that. She had that bakery, and and she just. I think she was also in season two, and that she was just like very sweet girl in this baker, and then she ends up being this killer. <laughs> like, it kills people with a rolling pin. I've suggested that. Maybe we think about that for Sharon in the coffee house and we should build a cellar. <laughs> and I maybe some things go down and she couldn't help it. She was in a situation. That's what I hope. Yeah. I, I love that. I wanted to read another Sugarless 20 says Sharon in the breast cancer story was excellent. The scene where she was looking at the clock in the medical clinic was so well done and unique. Are you allowed to make storyline ideas? She asked. Oh, well, first of all, thank you. I, I love those scenes too. I love how they were written with the clock. It really made it dramatic. And when I read that, I was very excited that that was going to turn out great. And I think it did. So thank you. Um, no, I don't get to suggest storyline. In fact, I was hesitant to even suggest the one I just did because I feel like I feel like anytime I suggest some storyline, that's absolutely not what we're going to do. That we're not the direction we're going to do now because now I said it. So I don't know. Maybe I'm imagining that, but um, that's my superstition. <laughs> well, that's funny. Joyce asked, was there any talk of linking Sharon and Michael, Christian LeBlanc, ever? Do you know? I don't think so. No. Um, they did work together. You know, he was her attorney um, way back. And the day I, I can't remember for what. And then for a while, he was actually a friend to her when she was bipolar. Um, but it, other than that, no, I don't remember them ever planning on that going any further. Um, yeah. And, you know, they, I think they, he's happily married with Lauren. And that's nice because you, you want to have at least one couple on the show that's not getting a divorce and remarrying, getting divorced, and <laughs> you know, one real steady character uh, couple on the show. And Nick and Sharon used to be that they were married for ten years, um, which was which is a long time, time in soap world. That was the that's longest like of marriage ever <laughs> at the time. So, um, you know, if you're going to have everybody else running around, you you kind of want at least that one couple to be stable. And Min and Victor and Nikki are quite stable these days. Um, Tiffany said, get Sharon out of that coffee shop. <laughs> Unless I get to murder people and put them in the cellar. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a dream storyline? Do you have a dream? You may not suggest it, but do you have a dream one in your head? Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that. I, love my that. <laughs> I, I see the devil in your eye there, too. Do you? <laughs> I I'm sorry, that. my thoughts are very loud. That's what people say about me. <laughs> totally could see that. Totally. Talk about <laughs> some of your favorite stories over the years. Three decades. Oh, well, you know, uh, Veronica Red, you remember she played Mamie. She recently came back and um, I was telling her, I was so glad to see her again. When I first joined the show, she was in the storyline with Jill and John Abbott and there had been the affair and that was i was brand new here so i was starting to watch the show and get into it and i was riveted by that storyline that's one of my favorite stories ever um the billy uh baby billy custody case was one of my favorites i thought uh as a courtroom drama i was really on the edge of my seat to see who was going to get custody of billy back then and now um <laughs> I mean, and Sharon was in high school at the time, but now Billy is like my age or older than me. Why not? <laughs> of course. So, Soap opera rapid aging syndrome. Yeah, or whatever. Rapid age up, age down. It's okay. It's entertainment. A lot of the fans. A lot of the fans are saying they would love to uh, 
see your mom return. Oh yeah, so would I. Well, thank you. I, I mean, as of right now, I don't, I don't know if there's any plans for that. But you know what? It's our anniversary year. There could be, could end up coming up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Cherie was asking, what's it like working with Kate and the evolution of Sharon and Tessa's relationship? Oh my gosh, I love Kate. Kate's so nice. She's so um, grateful. You know, she's just, that's the sense you get from her whenever she's here. She's just so grateful to be here. And she's, uh, she's a great, fun, silly personality that is just, it's fun to watch and fun to talk to her. Um, yeah, she's, yeah, just really genuine and, and very honest. And, and I, I like being around her. She's really, I love that description. Here. Oh, to, to hear, you know, somebody to, to be able to tell that they're grateful. That's really awesome. Yeah, you can, you know, like, you can just tell she is. She's, and maybe she's like me, or she has loud thoughts. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can read them on her face. You really can, yeah. um, I meant to ask, because again, I mean, you worked before, but was there anyone when you first stepped foot in Genoa City? that made you nervous working opposite them? Um, let's see. I don't remember feeling nervous, no. Everybody was really kind. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I you, were, felt, you were definitely more comfortable. You'd been doing it for a long, long time. Because I'd been doing it, I, because, yeah. you know, because that wasn't true when I started my first soap on General Hospital. I knew who Leslie Charleston was. I was really nervous to do my first scenes with her. I mean, this, she was a master class. And I'm walking out there and playing her daughter. I'm almost like apologetic. Like, I'm so sorry they cast me because you're so amazing. And I, <laughs> I, I was, uh, and it wasn't her that was uh, daunting. She couldn't have been kinder, but I was just nervous. Right, but we knew who she was, which makes her yeah, bigger than life. It was right? all in my head and my own ideas. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever have you bumped into her over the years um not in a very very long time um since then yes i have bumped into her at some emmy parties and we've said hello um but it, that has been a long time long time long time and what are some of sharon's favorite stories your own um well i I would say I liked Veronica Red's stories, but my own, other than those, um, I mean, I've liked a lot of the stories here. I've liked a lot of my stories. Oh, you mean Sharon Newman's stories. Yeah. Um, I really like, Joshua and I agree, we like the Cameron Kirsten story. That was one of our favorites. It's just, I'm surprised here he liked it, but I guess I can understand why. It was fun to... Um, we got to jump out of an airplane, not really, but our characters jump out of an airplane. But still, we had to go to an airplane hangar and bungee to shoot that. There was a lot of action involved in, in it. And then we were on location in a cornfield. Of course, I got to drag his body and across the hotel room and into the trunk of my car and drive around for days. That was fun for me. There was something in it that both Joshua and I really loved. And it was really fun. It was well written. It had so many twists and turns. Um, it went on for a long time, but you never got bored because always, there was always something else happening. Good writing. Good writing. Yeah, that um, was I heard you You did a Digest podcast a few years ago and you named all of the crazy things Sharon has done. So I want to say, ready, set, go. And, oh, my God. And okay. Jumped out of an airplane. <laughs> I, dra I killed a guy and drove around with this dead body in my trunk for four days. I fell off of a cliff with Drusilla. I froze, but I came back to life. And then, oh, I think I um, I pushed a girl down the stairs. I pushed Phyllis down the stairs, or I let her go down the stairs, and Sky went down a volcano. Um, what else have I? Oh, I've gone through a glass window. I think um, that had something to do with Cameron Kirsten. And then I, um, I married a lot, but, you know, I'm the romantic type. <laughs> you married a lot. You you've worked with a lot of good men on that show. Uh -huh. Hopefully you don't lose anymore. Hopefully <laughs> they don't, you know, die like Ray did. 
Yeah, I know. I've definitely worked with, with a lot of good men, and yeah, I hope they don't all die or like raided. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Do you find that type of um, work? challenging and difficult like you know when cassie died and ray and um yeah i mean it's because it's it's very sad um but you know it's also good to have drama and it's your the actors are always thankful to have some drama so oh you know um like i said soap operas are a revolving door and and that's what sometimes if not oftentimes happens very true. One of the fans said they'd like to see a Sharon and Chance relationship. Oh, I've, I've heard that a lot lately. <laughs> huh. and, and, well, and, they, and they want you to spill the beans, which would get you into a lot of trouble if you know this answer. But they want to know what Mariah and Tessa's baby name is. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, I just learned it um, last week, I think. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, don't give it away. No, I can't tell you. Um, I, can't, <laughs> I can't tell you, but um, let's see. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. And Sheridan and Chance have a lot of more. I've shot a lot of scenes with him that have not aired yet. And I ha I'm reading ahead in my scripts. I have some more. So um, I can't answer that fan's question as to you know, what the storyline is exactly. But if you want to see more of Sharon and Chance, you're going to. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, Sunita says, you're my absolute fave, Sharon. You are Sunita, the Sunita, you're my favorite, too. I know you. Hi. <laughs> <I've seen> you <laughs> that's awesome. Your name. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so, Tiffany says, Queen Sharon as well. Oh, uh, thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. Uh, you guys are the best. I love you guys. Thank you. You know, Twitter... It's such a rough place, really. Um, so for me, I stay away from it. But except for one thing, you girls and you know out there who are watching Young and the Restless, um, Sunita, Tiffany, I, I'll, I love seeing your tweets. You are uplifting. You are so kind, and you are the opposite of what Twitter has become. And you make give me a reason to want to to look at it or read it because you're just such a breath of fresh air. Thank you for following me and following Young and the Restless and, and being such great fans. And we uh, we really appreciate it. We know who you are. Wow. Sharon, that's amazing. You, when you started 30 years ago, it, it, we had none of this, you know? Yeah. I mean, how, how has it been for you to get the immediate uh, reactions? You know, um, to see a change from the snail mail to. Yeah. It was really, really great at first, you know, when, when Twitter came out and then Instagram and we had a way of hearing from fans and getting feedback right away. I remember, especially at first, because um, this soap opera is a closed set. We don't have an audience. People aren't coming here uh, like on a, a like on a sitcom or something. So. You, when you're acting on shooting these scenes all day long, so you're getting no immediate feedback. You have no idea if what you did was good or not or how anybody reacted to it. So the most immediate reaction you you could suddenly now get from fans was on Twitter. And then, and you know, the actors are willing to hear it was good, it was bad, it was ugly, whatever it was. Um, we just want to know, you know, how it was. What right. did you think? And, uh, and and sharing good and good, the bad and the ugly, but be respectful. Yeah, of course. It is is a lovely thing if they're sharing it and being respectful. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. constructive criticism is a, has always been welcome, but Twitter has gotten a little bit. I don't know something else. It's hard. <laughs> it it yeah. can be difficult. It can be yeah. difficult. Sharon, I know you have to get back to set. Yeah. Happy. 30 for you and happy 50 to Young and the Restless. It's Thank such you. a pleasure to meet you. It was so nice to meet you, Alan. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome.
And thank you for everybody on Twitter for tuning in and for being there day after day and watching Young and the Restless all these years. And happy anniversary to Young and the Restless, 50 years. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Sharon. You too, Alan. Everybody Bye-bye. else. Too. Bye. Happy anniversary, Young and the Restless. Thank you, Sharon Case, for spending this time with us. The Young and the Restless airs on CBS at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Oh, wow. Don't miss. What? The Young and the Restless anniversary coming up. Thanks, everybody, for spending time with me today. Join us next week when actors Joe Lando joins me on Wednesday, March 8th. And Peter Boynton from As the World Turns joins me live on when, uh, Thursday, March 9th. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, do so, do so down below. Turn on the notifications and hit the like button. It will help me out. And you can search your favorite Locker Room episode on all your streaming platforms. Just download and enjoy. Have a great weekend, everybody. I will see you on Wednesday. <laughs>